We will table that meeting and resume it next Sunday, May 20th, following worship to consider the recommendation from the church council to the congregation to hire a part-time pastor. So uh, if you have any questions, please stop by at the forum following worship during the coffee hour down in the fellowship hall. On this past Wednesday's worship service, our high school graduates were honored. Uh, their names are listed in an insert in the bulletin. And uh, we also have a beautiful bulletin board with their graduate photos and a note about them. So if you want to stop and see that following worship, I invite and encourage you to do that. Uh, the flowers up front here. They're over by the pulpit. Thanks, because I can't see them. Um, are in loving memory of Barb Ziegler's mother, Bernice Holstead, uh, given by Barb. Today we include in our prayers the Grosskreutz family as they suffered a death this past week. Laura Grosskreutz died on Wednesday morning. She's the wife of Billy Grosskreutz, daughter-in-law of Bill and Andy. And Laura's funeral will be held on Monday tomorrow at Bethlehem Lutheran Church in, I'm going to try to say this name, Asco? Okay, Minnesota, up, up near Sandstone up near the in the Hinckley area so our prayers are with your family at this time and finally I asked Roger Grosskreutz to come forward on behalf of the Good Shepherd Choir Thank you. I've, I've been asked to uh, do an honor for uh, Jim Raymaker. And uh, that's been a long time that Jim and I have been able to sit over there in the choir loft and together we joined our voices in the same section over those many years. And how much it means to me to have had him there. And I can speak, I believe, from the whole choir how much they appreciated you, Jim, being there too. And the things that I think we, not just me, not just Jim, but the whole choir, try to do is spread the word of God to other people. And we hope we do that by reaching other people. Just like three weeks ago, Jeanette and I left here after service we didn't get to that door and someone come up to us and thanked us so much for the song we sang that day and to me that tells me that we touched someone else's life and that's what we're trying to do and at this time I can't help but think of maybe the people from the congregation, but maybe people that come as visitors, we can touch their lives. Plus, our form of communications that we got these days, we're touching so many people outside of this building. And that's Jim. I want to thank you so much, and it seems just a thank you is so small compared to what you've done. And Jackie, I want to talk to you too, 
for the time maybe you give up for allowing Jim to come and do what he enjoyed. And with that said, uh, Jeanette and I have got this plaque on our refrigerator door. The human spirit is not measured by the size of the act, but by the size of the heart. Jim, I thought that hit you so close over the many years you sang. You mentioned once to me that you sang at such an early age. All I can say is resigning or retiring retiring from choir after singing in choir starting at the age of nine until now really so we thank him for this long as uh, big part of his life all his life and we thank him for sharing his gifts with the congregation in this way let's rise as we sing our opening hymn it's in your red hymnal 641 
We gather for worship in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us prepare our hearts and our minds for worship as we confess our sins before God and one another. Patient and loving God, we do not love as we ought to love. We are not always patient or kind. We let envy, bitterness, arrogance, and rudeness have their way in our lives. Forgive us for all the ways we have failed to love. Fill us with a love that penetrates even the hardest of hearts. Beloved, let us love one another. God is love and God forgives. Here this day, today you are forgiven. Today you are washed clean, made new, and filled with love by a God who is love. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please join me as we sing together the Kyrie, and it's in the front part of your red hymnal, page 184. now as we pray together the prayer of the day is printed on the front of your bulletin loving God your love can transform darkness into light despair into hope and fear into peace help us to love as you love with patience kindness selflessness and joy amen this time I invite you to be seated and I invite kids to come forward for a children's message Good morning. 
Good morning. Today we're going to do something that I know you can handle. I know even you can handle it. You can handle just about anything, I think. Okay. She bit you last night? Oh my goodness gracious. Boy, you got to stay on your toes with her, don't you, Isaac? Okay. Here's what we're going to do this morning. We are going to... Did you find the worship bags? You found all the stuff I put in them, didn't you, Deacon? Do you like it? Good. We are going to start this morning by memorizing a Bible verse. And yes, even you can memorize a Bible verse. Okay? Today we're going to read for our Bible story today one of my favorite Bible verses. Okay? And here is what we're going to memorize. 1 John 4 says, Isaac, turn around because you need to memorize this with me. The verse is, God is love. Do you think you can handle memorizing that? Can you learn it by heart? Okay, let's say it together. God is love. Got it? Say it again. God. God is love. You got it? Three words, right? Now do you think we can teach it to these guys? You better stand up. Okay, they're a little older than you are. Okay? We won't say slower. Okay? We think they can, do you think they can memorize it too? Do you think so? Even grandpa and grandma? Think they can handle it? Okay, we believe in you. Okay? You're going to memorize 1 John 4 and remind them what it is. Okay, can you tell them what it is? 1 John 4. 1 John 4, and it is? God is love. Okay, can you say it with Isaac? Very good, you got it. 1 John 4 is God is love. There! We did it. We memorized some scripture. We took the Bible and we put it deep in our head and deep in our heart. Okay, you can be seated now. Now, the question I have for you, God is love. How big do you think God's love is? Can we measure God's love? Do you think we can measure God's love? Okay, so I have a cup over here. Okay? And we use cups to... Like measure when we're baking, if we want to measure sugar or flour. We measure things when we cook. Is this about the size of God's love? No? How big? How many? I need a cup about that big? Overflowing. Exactly. That's you said the word overflowing. There's a Bible verse that says, you know how big God's love is? It says, my cup overflows flows. So do you think if I put God's love in here, it will overflow? What about if I get a cup this big? It still will overflow. Okay. So the cup overflows. Now, then I brought another thing I used to me measure. I brought, this is not just a yardstick. This is a, this is a big one. Okay. This is big. This is four feet. I don't know, Kent. I got this out of your closet. <laughs> Most yard sticks are about like this. Okay? Kent doesn't know what a yard is. He thinks it's four feet. Okay? So is that about if I want to measure God's love? Is that about high enough? How high do you think God's love is? You think it's higher than this? Oh, you are so smart. Right? Okay? Because it's not just this tall, or two of these Kent yardsticks, okay? Or not even to the top. Look at the top of the ceiling. Do you think God's love is higher than that? Okay, in the Bible it says, God's love is higher than a mountain, deeper than the ocean. Right, so do I need more than this to measure it? Can I ever measure to the tippy top of God's love? I don't think I can. Right? It just keeps going on. Okay, here's another thing I used to measure. Over here I brought my handy dandy clock. And this measures time. How long does God's love last? Five minutes? Five minutes? Five minutes? Is it six, 25 minutes? 
whoa, that's a long time. Do you think God's love might even be longer than minutes? Do you think it might be hours, years? How long, how old are you? Four years old. Do you think that God's love is bigger than four years old? How long do you think God has been loving the earth? A long time since God created the earth. And then how long will God keep creating the earth? Do you think about 100 more years maybe? 500 more years? Wow. You know what it says in the Bible? You know how long God's love lasts? Forever. Haley's too. God's love is even longer than that. Right? Because God's love lasts forever. Okay, so we can't even use this to measure it, can we? Right? We can't measure it with a cup. We can't measure it with a yardstick or even a four-foot yard, four yardstick. We can't measure it with a clock because it is. Our cup overflows. It's higher than a mountain, deeper than the ocean, and it is forever. Right? So we can't measure God's love, but we can do what? We can say, thank you, God. Right? And the other thing that we can do is imitate it. Imitate God's love and live it out in our lives. Okay? Let's say a prayer. Take your hands. Take your hands, Deacon, and put them together. Okay? And let's pray. Who do we talk to when we pray? We talk to God. Let's say thank you to God. Okay? Dear God, Dear God. thank you for your love. Thank, thank you for your love. It overflows, it overflows, and it is forever. It is forever. Help us to live out your love. Help us to live out your love. Amen. Thanks for coming up, and we have Sunday School. Who is teaching? Are you teaching today? Mrs. Wagner is your teacher today. Thank you, Mrs. Wagner, for being one of our teachers.
They tell me on this paper that I'm supposed to put the microphone to my mouth because they know I'm short. <laughs> okay. Today's psalm is from chapter 107, verses 1 through 8, and it will be read responsively. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, those he redeemed from trouble. And gathered in from the lands, from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. Some wandered in the desert wastes, finding no way to an inhabited town. Hungry and thirsty, their soul fainted within them. And then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He led them by a straight way until they reached an inhabited town. Let them thank the Lord for his steadfast love, for his wonderful words to humankind. Here ends the psalm reading. A reading now from 1 John, chapter 4, as we continue now reading. First we read John's Gospel, and now we're reading more that he wrote. So later in his life he wrote... This, some think it's a letter, some say it's a sermon. 1 John chapter 4. Praise to you, O Lord. John writes these words that many of us have heard before. Beloved, let us love one another, because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed to us this way. God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us and his love is perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us because he has given us his spirit. And we, and we have seen and do testify that the Father has sent his Son as the Savior of the world. God abides in those who confess that Jesus is the Son of God and they abide in God. So we have known and believe that God, the love that God has for us. God is love. And those who abide in love abide in God and God abides in them. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness on the day of judgment because as he is, so we are in the world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not re reached perfection in love. We love because he first loved us. Those who say, I love God, and hate their brothers and sisters, they're liars. For those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. The commandment we have from him is this those who love god must love their brothers and sisters also word of god word of life thanks be to god grace to you and peace from god the father from our lord from our savior who is jesus the christ I think that one of the joys in parenting, at least for me, as I raised my two kids, came when my kids were young, two, three, four, and when they learned how to say the wonderful phrase that we teach them by saying it to them time and time again, that phrase, I love you. The joy comes not in just when they say it after we say it first to them. That's how it starts a lot. We say, I love you, and then they finally start replying, I love you too, okay? 
But the real joy came for me when they say it to me out of the blue, okay? That they love me as a parent. And uh, that's the real, that's the first time that I really felt this complete joy in this parenting when they told me that themselves. And I'll never forget the first time that it happened with my oldest, with my Sam, as a parent for me, when he said it to me. Sam has just turned 23, and he's got the I love you thing down pat, okay? But turn back the clock when he was about three, and he was just learning how to express his love. One day, I'd gotten done feeding, Sam had gotten done eating his lunch, and I washed his face and washed his hands, and told him, let's head out and play a little bit, okay? Oh, and he'd had a good lunch, and he was happy and fulfilled and smiling, thrilled to go outside, and he said those words, and it made my heart smile. Oh, I love you, Mommy, he said. And I felt like, I felt like I'd won the lottery, okay? It was so fulfilling to hear him say that. So we headed outside, and we played in the sandbox, and I sat there, doing some yard work around him. And before long, our backyard neighbor gal, Kate, who's quite a few years older than Sam, she must be six or eight years older than him, she was outside, and so even though she was many years older than Sam, she came and she sat down alongside the sandbox and played with him. And while they were playing, I heard it again. He looked up at Kate, and he was so grateful that this older backyard neighbor was playing with him and he turned to her and he said, Kate, I love you. And on the one hand, I was thrilled, you know, that my son was so kind and loving and caring and polite. But I thought, those are my words. <laughs> okay. Then later in the afternoon, we came to the house and we had a nap. And at the end of the afternoon, the doorbell rang. Who was there? The Schwann's man. Okay, and he came and he brought the delivery and then right before he left, he turned to Sam and he handed him a popsicle. He asked me if it was okay and I said sure. And Sam was more than thrilled to receive this treat from the Schwann's man. And anyone want to guess what Sam said to the Schwann's man? Okay, he turned to the Schwann's man with a smile on his face holding that popsicle and he said, I love you, okay? And I shook my head and I thought, boy, he just doesn't get it, okay? But then I realized later, maybe he does get it. And maybe for him and his limited vocabulary, love was his way of saying, boy, thanks for that great meal, or thanks for playing with me in my sandbox, or thanks for sharing this popsicle with me, Mr. Ice Cream Man, and maybe he does get it, that love is what it's all about. At the beginning and at the end of the day, at the beginning and the end of our life, love, just like it says, Paul wrote, the greatest of these, the greatest of these is love. Love, I love, I heard this once, love takes one second to say, maybe an hour to explain, but it takes your whole life to learn what love is and what it means when we say God is love. God shows us exactly that, that it takes a life, a whole life, a human life to fully express love. Today we continue our reading through 1 John this letter or this sermon that this gospel writer wrote at the end of his life. And you can really hear echoes of his gospel, especially this one who wrote John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son. We can hear that echo then in 1 John when he talks about those important words, God is love. Because he says that how does God express his love to us? in the gift of his beloved son. John connects it right away that the love that we share, the love we express, the love we receive is connected and all woven in 
to the life and the death of Jesus Christ. Explaining that the way we know love from God is through Jesus Christ. It's a love that died on the cross for us. It's a suffering love. It's an amazing love that we cannot even comprehend how much he gave for us to share his love with us. Love is not just an abstract idea, though. It's very, very concrete, and it required a person. In the case of God, it's embodied in Jesus Christ. God's love was born in a Bethlehem manger and grew up and preached and taught and performed miracles and then sacrificed on a cross. So in our reading for today, John explains that love is from God, poured out to us from Jesus. And it's not something that we just think about or give thanks for. But then right away, John says, and you can't just live it, you can't just receive it, you have to share it. It has to go into you, but then it can't just stay there, it has to go out of you as well. He said it's meant to be shared and spread and given away to the world. He goes as far as to say this. In a real stern way, he calls us liars if we say we love God and then don't share it. And he says, whoever does not love God does not, or whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. Everyone who is love is born of God and knows God and then shares that love of God. It's simple, John says. It is not possible to be a child of God if you don't love other people around you. We reveal that we belong to God in our love. Maya Angelou, a great poet, said, when people show you who they are, believe them. Christians don't have the best track record for showing love. You'd think we'd be the best at it. Because we're the ones who hear again and again and again this story of love and how sacrificial and how giving it is. Some people have even said church would be great if it wasn't for the people who fill the pews. And there's a great decline that we are experiencing right now. It's happening in the church, in every denomination, in every part of the country, in our country. It's a great decline. And of course there are people exploring why this is happening and how this is happening and what's happening and how the younger generation has stepped away from the church and what they are saying, among other things, is that too many of the people in the church believe with their words, and they might profess their faith and say God is love, but then they walk out of church, and they're judgmental and mean-spirited and don't share love with other people. John says it plainly here. Those who love God must love other people as well. Mr. Rogers, who actually, you know, the won't you be my neighbor man? He's a preacher too. Did you know that? He's gone now. He's, he's passed away. He's died. But he was a preacher before he was on children's television and he elaborated on what John said by saying this. Mr. Rogers said, to love someone is to strive to accept that person exactly the way he or she is, right here, right now. End quote. Nowhere in the Bible does it tell us that our job is to judge other people what does John ask us to do? Love. Love other people. And when we don't love, when we choose instead to judge or to hate or to criticize 
or to draw the line and say these people belong but these people don't what we're doing is not high and mighty but we're doing one thing says John we're denying the presence of God in our lives period we can't say I love God and then hate or judge other people that's just a paraphrase of what John says to us we can't say I love God but then hate people for who they are or what they are we can't say I love God but then hate people who practice their faith differently than we do or believe differently we can't say I love God and then hate people who are different than we are and act like we're superior and they're less than us period God's love challenges us to realize that love does not discriminate we are even called to love our enemies and if we don't John says we are lying when we say that we love God it's possible to say with our lips you believe God but then you totally deny the presence of God in your life and God's existence if you don't live it out with your life but God says I don't leave you alone okay he's with us in our love and he even gave us others to help us love look around you these are some of the people that God gave you to love and to be loving okay we don't have to do it together the best part about being a church is that we get to join together and we get to love together and we get to become the body of Christ to the world I see Carol Askey sitting there and Carol has in her heart the desire to feed hungry people could you do it all alone Carol nope it takes a team it takes a community right to feed the hungry people that we have the best part part of being a church is that we get to join together and we get to love together and we get to become the body of Christ to the world together we bring so much love and so much hope and so much help when we confess the love of God with our lips and with our lives and truly live out the love of God to others a story and then I'm done here's a name from the past I said this on Wednesday night and most people looked at me and said I don't even know who you're talking about Jimmy Durante you remember that name okay on Wednesday they said who okay Jimmy Durante was an entertainer around 70 years ago he was a singer he was a comedian kind of one of those variety guys okay and remember what his trademark was nose. his nose his big big nose he called himself the great schnozola okay Jimmy Durante was popular and he was famous and, and in the midst of his fame and in the midst of his popularity he was asked if he would come to a show that they were putting on in New York City to entertain World War II veterans and he said yes I want to be there I want to be a part of it but he explained I have a really busy schedule that day he said I can only do one short comedy set for about three or four minutes he said I have to be somewhere else beforehand and then I have my own appearance right afterwards and so I'll come two or three minutes so Jimmy got there rushed in the door at the show that was going on to honor the veterans and they brought him up on stage and he performed that short monologue that he'd agreed to do and the people laughed and their applause grew louder and louder and then to the surprise of the organizers of this veteran show Jimmy Durante just kept going okay not just two or three minutes he went 20 minutes 40 minutes an hour later Jimmy Durante finally took a bow and he left the stage and the organizer shook his hand and thanked him and said wow I thought you were gonna give us four minutes thank you so much Mr. Durante for giving us a whole hour and he explained I do have to go he said but I can show you why I stayed and then he took the organizer over to the side of the stage 
And he pointed down to the front row and he said, there why I stayed. And there in the front row were two men. And they had each lost an arm in the war. One lost the right, one lost the left. And together, they were clapping. How did they do it? Not by themselves. How did they do it? One with another. Okay? They helped each other. They worked together. And together, they could clap. Together, they were cheering. And together, they made a team. And together, they didn't focus on what they'd lost, but they focused on what they had and their joy and their gratitude and their teamwork. Jimmy Durante said, they're the ones that kept me here, not for four minutes, but for an hour. Together. Together we can form Christ's body of love. Together we can remind each other what love is. And sometimes we have to remind each other what love is not. Okay? And we have to stand up and say no when we hear people being judgmental or critical or dividing. Together, we can remind each other what love is, and together we can be the loving church of our great, loving God. May this church, may this community, and all people we encounter know we are Christians by our love. As Paul says, faith, hope, and love abide. These three, and the greatest of these is love. Make love your goal, your reason, and your purpose for living. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please join me now as we sing together hymn number 715.
I invite you to rise and then join me on page 105 at the front part of your same red hymnal as we confess our common faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please turn and greet one another with this peace which comes from God. As you place your offering in the basket this morning, think of the young people in our congregation who have been a part of the education programs that Good Shepherd has to offer. Our youngest learners have gathered on both Sunday mornings and Wednesday evenings, led by volunteers who are using curriculum that your offering dollars purchased. The confirmation students are finishing up their year of learning as well, and your offering dollars support that program too. Thank you for your faithful giving, which helps us teach about the love of God.
The next two hymns were changed, so don't refer to your bulletins. But instead, open up your red hymnal to hymn number 692. 692, we are an offering. 692. Please rise. Mindful that God's love is immeasurable. We pray now for the church, the world, and all those in need. Gracious Lord God, we give you thanks that you love us beyond measure. You shower us with abundant love, overflowing love, a love that is there for us regardless of what we do. Thank you for your unconditional love, and we pray, God, that you would help us love this same way. Help us reach out with love and with care. Help us work together to bring love to everyone we meet. Lord, in your mercy, we give you thanks and praise, Lord God, for we know it is you that has seen us through this past week, giving us strength in our weakness, courage and peace in our lives and hope for tomorrow. Thank you for being the balance in our often chaotic lives. Lord, Lord in your mercy. God of love, we give you thanks for all the women in our lives who have been kind and nurturing, our mothers and all those who share care and love and who have guided us through life. We pray that our mothers and their kindness may serve as an inspiration to in turn help others in our lives. Thank you, God, for giving us mothers and other women to guide us. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious God, tragedy strikes and we're left in pain and shock. We pray for all who faced hardship and pain this past week. We pray for the people in Hawaii who are impacted by the volcano and the lava flow. We lift up in prayer Bill and Andy Grosskreutz and William and their family as they grieve the unexpected death of Laura. When people are hurting, God inspire us to reach out in love. Help us to be good friends as we lift up to you those who hurt in our community and those who are hurting around the globe. Comfort them. Oh God, Lord, in your mercy, you are the great physician. And we pray, God, that you would bring wholeness and health to all who stand in need of your protection, of your healing. And today we pray for those, those that we name aloud, as we pray for Bessie Barnick, baby Nash Warmka, Bebo Getchell. We pray for Lyle Stern's brother, Gene, who's battling multiple myeloma. And we also lift up in prayer people whom we name for silently. Wash us in your healing grace. Lord, in your mercy. Knowing that you hear our prayers, we lift all these things to you, O God, praying in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, 
and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now may the Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Our sending song is not the one printed in your bulletin, but it has been changed to 595. Jesus loves me, 595. continue to have the coffee fellowship served by youth that are going to the youth gathering and today I believe that it's Mr. Andrew Higgins day to serve once again and so we invite you to coffee and then during the coffee fellowship uh, Council President Danette Niebuhr is going to lead a discussion on uh, the congregational meetings coming up. Go in peace, serve the Lord. <laughs>